right away you'll notice, of course, I'm working on Mac. Uh, I intend to do most of my stuff today on Mac. I'll jump into Windows for a little bit just to show some of the apps, but uh, I think it's interesting to show Xamarin Studio, uh, what it can accomplish, and quite frankly, I'm, I was a long-time Visual Studio user. Um, I do most of my work in Xamarin Studio now. I've, I've become so accustomed to it, and I actually really, I almost prefer it now. Not to say anything bad about Visual Studio, but the, this tool is pretty, pretty fantastic as well. So I'd go do a new solution, and this dialog looks really similar to Visual Studio. We've got our different uh, categories for projects and our different project types in the center. So, um, traditionally we have these iOS projects, Android projects, so we've got an iOS uh, library project. If I dig down farther, I've got an iPhone project. There's a bunch of different templates to choose from. I've got Android projects as well, same idea. But now for Xamarin Forms, we've got this new category called mobile apps. And the important projects, probably for us today, thank you, are the two blank apps. So we could do a class library. That's kind of to facilitate people who want to create controls to reuse. Um, we have two options for the blank app. We do support portable class libraries as well as Microsoft's new shared project type. Um, we recommend that you go with the portable class libraries uh, if possible. The shared projects are interesting but tend to find a lot of people doing if def statements a lot in them, which isn't a bad in and of itself, but it just tends to lead to more, or sorry, to less refactorable code. Uh, PCLs are, are a really good way to go, so that's what I'll be working with today is these PCL projects. So once you create that project, I'm not going to do that right now, uh, you'd end up with, uh, in this particular template, you'd end up with these four different projects. So you end up with this monkeys project, uh, you end up with this monkeys.android.ios and .windows phone. So these three are obviously the platform specific projects, the platform specific apps that we need to run. And this guy here, if I open it up and go to the project settings and the general tab, let's zoom back out a bit. I'm actually using a PCL here, and you can see I've got Profile 78 chosen. So I'm getting Win, uh, .NET 4.5, you know, Win, all the Windows 8 stuff, and Xamarin iOS and Xamarin Android. That's probably, I'll try and scroll up as best as I can here for the people at the back. So we're just using a simple PCL, nothing fancy there. And if I look at inside the project, uh, I've got, you know, my typical references, uh, and here in Xamarin Studio, we actually group them, like if you've got NuGet packages reference, we group them like that. Um, you can see the, plat uh, the namespaces that get put in for this particular PCL profile. So we've got that set up. You can see the packages, the NuGet packages we've imported. We could add new ones. This is something that we've added more recently is some really good NuGet support in Xamarin Studio. So here's you know, all the NuGet classes uh, that we could search, packages we could search through. And then we'll start looking at some of the code. So that, again, this is our shared class, our shared library, portable class library. Um, I've got a monkey class here. We're going to show a list of monkeys, and we're going to be able to navigate to the details in this app. So just a really simple data structure, the name, location, details, and a URL for the image. I've got this monkey helper class, which all this is doing is giving me a method to grab a random monkey from our list and pre-populating that list. Um, you know, not doing a web service call or anything like that, but simulating the idea, pre-populating that list with some data. Really simple. Close those guys up. And now we'll get into the actual good stuff. So if you look in the template, you're going to start out with this app class. And this is really your, your app's entry point. Um, and it doesn't have to do anything special. All it re we really need is some place to, to sort of create our first page that we're going to show in the UI. So you can see this get main page call. Doesn't have to be named that. This is just a convenient way to do it. Uh, and then we're creating this new instance of a monkey page, monkeys page. Um, and before I go to the code uh, for the monkeys page, you can see here that my, my method call is actually returning this new navigation page, passing our monkey page into it. So the navigation page constructor in this case wants us to define a root page. So I mentioned navigation page is kind of this special case. Um, it basically manages a stack of navigation for us. So we can push things onto the stack, we can pop things off of the stack. It does all of the hard work and, and managing for that for us. So I'm gonna have the monkeys page shown as the root page, which makes a lot of sense. And we'll navigate to the monkeys page. And here I've got this observable collection of monkey types, our monkey list. And 
you'll notice a lot of things again if like I'm, I'm curious how many people do Windows Phone or Windows development uh, like WPF XAML stuff so uh, a few people anyway too so this is all going to look somewhat familiar to you we're using a lot of the same ideas that we would use in Windows Phone um, so in my monkeys page now this is showing you how to do all of the UI creation from code and we'll take a look at doing the same app from XAML in a second but first I want to show you how to do it by code and it's actually a pretty simple class um, in our constructor, we set the page title, uh, we create our list view here, and we're setting our item source to be the monkeys that we created. Uh, then we use this data template, and th again, this is the same as Windows Phone stuff. Uh, and we're, we're telling our data template that we want it to be an image cell type, which is one of the built-in controls, a special kind of uh, list view item, if you will. And then we're doing some binding here. We're setting up some one-way binding, uh, to our actual data template that we've defined. So to set our binding, we need to give two pieces of information. We need to tell it, well, what on the target control, what property do we want to bind to? In this case, there's some helpers, uh, some static property helpers. So for instance, text property gives us the right property on our uh, image cell to bind to. And then we need to tell it what uh, property from our source data object to actually bind to that image cell text property. So we're just going to tell it that this is the name, so this is the, the monkey class dot name property. And then same thing for location and image. Uh, you'll notice this is image source, so we're feeding it a URL and it's going to take care of downloading the picture for us and caching it and everything. So pretty simple there. Our list then is being given an item template, we're assigning the cell, and we can access the item tapped event to figure out whenever someone presses a, an item in the list. That's pretty easy. So that gives us our uh, our event args uh, dot item gives us our monkey, so we cast to a monkey, and then we're calling this navigation property, and we're, we're asking it to push a page onto the stack. And you'll notice a couple things here. Push, first of all, is an async method. We use a lot of async stuff in Xamarin Forms. Uh, it makes it really nice for not having to worry about being on the UI thread by you know doing your awaiting and stuff in the right places. Uh, and then we're pushing the details page. Uh, which is another page that we'll take a look at in a second with the actual monkey that's been selected. Finally, we're deselecting the list item. So when you press on a list item, it's going to actually highlight it until you tell it not to do that. Uh, finally, it wouldn't do us any good to have an empty list because our observable collection in there had nothing in it. So we're going to create a new button, throw it on the, um, first of all, wire up the click handler to actually add a monkey, just calling that get random monkey that we had in our monkey helper. And finally, we need to actually assign that all to the page's content. So we talked about a page having a layout and a layout having controls. So we've actually just uh, set up a stack layout in this case and added our list and then our button onto it. And it's a, a pretty simple layout. Assign that stack layout as our page's content and we're good to go. So that creates that whole list view page for us um, with the monkey items showing up properly and adding them to it. Uh, the last thing that we need to look at for the UI is this details page. This one's pretty simple too. Um, again, it's a content page, which means that we just have to assign the content property of it at the end to actually tell it what we want to show. So we've got our monkey passed into the constructor that was selected, set that to the, the monkey's name to the title, create a new label with the monkey's detail information, create a new image, setting the source, um, just setting some options to make it the aspect ratio right and actually for it to expand as much as it can to fill the view. And then finally we're adding a scroll view and inside of that we're adding a stack layout. So those are two layouts you can nest together in case all of the text and everything overflows the size of the screen we want the user to be able to scroll which is why we could put everything in a scroll view. And finally adding the details and image to the stack layout children. So this is pretty much our whole app right here and you've noticed that I haven't said anything about iOS or Android or Windows Phone um, so in this case our code reuse is really high because we're not doing anything specific to each platform but let's go look at each of the platforms quick before we run this and I'll start with iOS um, so on iOS this is most of this stuff is what you just you get by default in your your project template uh, the, the only things that we've really done here in this case, are to the app delegate. So by default, you get this main uh, class, and this just calls uh, a special UI application.main method, which kind of fires up your iOS app. 
Uh, that comes in every <coughs> template. What we're really interested in is this app that we get. And again, this comes in every template as well, but in this case, we're doing something special. So the only code that we've really changed from this project template is really you know, this line and, and I guess this line. So there's two lines specific to this platform right now. First of all is just to initialize the forms engine. We always have to do that. And second of all is to actually assign the proper, so in iOS you have the concept of the UI window. You really have one of those per app, and then your UI window has a root view controller. So your view controller is like your form or your screen, and you can have multiple ones of those, and you would navigate between different UI view controllers. So what we're doing here is we're saying app, calling our app class, our shared uh, class, give me the main page, if you remember that method we looked at first of all. It's gonna return our navigation page with our monkey page as the root. And then there's a specific extension method here on iOS uh, called create view controller, which, zoom in here a bit, returns a UI view controller which is specific to the iOS platform. Sorry, scroll down there at the back. So um, that's an extension method just on iOS and we use that to actually uh, turn our main page, because this is actually a page, a Xamarin Forms page, turn that main page into a view controller that works with iOS. And we assign it to our window and fire up the app. So let's take a look at it while I take a little bit of a break from showing you code. So I'm just gonna run this in the simulator. I'm gonna run it on the new iPhone 6 simulator. And we integrate with Apple's uh, Xcode to use their, their simulators to run on. And as soon as it fires up, it should launch. And you'll see our monkey app so you can see here we've got our title set that we set up. Our list view right now is empty, but it's there. And then our button on the bottom to actually add monkeys to the list. So if I start adding some monkeys to the list, it's just randomly adding more and more and more monkeys. And you know I can scroll through the list. We've got our picture. It's not the nicest layout. It doesn't look super pretty. Um, but we did it with pretty minimal code. And now if I click on one of these guys, actually navigate to the details page with the text and the image a bit bigger. And on iOS, this happens inside of this uh, concept of a UI view, con or sorry, UI navigation controller, it's called, which gives us the, the stack of uh, navigation that we see, you know, gives us the buttons up here to navigate back and everything. So that's how everything looks implemented on iOS. And again, there's only like two lines of code specific to iOS that we did, so that's pretty minimal. And then if I go into my Android app, and I'm gonna have to change my build target here and set my Android application as my startup project so that we actually run it. I believe my emulator's fired up. We'll see if that actually works or not. Um, so in the Android app, same idea. We've got this sort of project template that we haven't done a lot to. We get this assets folder by default. Um, we get you know, the resources, which is Android specific. Um, we don't try and hide how they handle resources. You use the same drawable folders and everything that you would in a Java app. So we've got that. The only thing that we've really changed is this main activity. So in Android, instead of UI view controllers or view controllers, we actually use things called activities. Now by default in your Xamarin Android app and in a Java Android app, you'd have uh, your main activity uh, or inherit from ac ac normal activity. Uh, so what we've changed here is to actually use the Xamarin Forms Android activity which gives us a few other methods here. We still have the same onCreate method that we'd have to call in a normal app. Uh, and this is where we're doing our Xamarin Forms initialization. We do have to pass it. On Android, there's this concept of context, and you pretty much can't do anything without having a context. And a context is pretty much just like your, your UI context. Um, so in this case, our activity is a type of context. We can just pass it an instance of ourselves, and we pass it the bundle. Um, in case there's any uh, anything that needs to be passed to the form uh, to the page when it's being created, and finally the Android activity has the set page method. Scroll up here again, and again we're just calling that app get main page. And because the set page method actually takes a Xamarin Forms page, we don't have to do anything special there. So really, in this application, we've only changed two lines of code as well for Android. So if I run this. Uh, no promises, this is not going to try and fire up a new emulator. Ah, perfect. Actually did what I wanted. So here's our Android application. 
again an empty list and a button at the bottom. I can start adding items to the list. It's a little bit slower. It's the Android emulator for you. If you've ever worked with it, you'll understand. Um, so it's taking some time, but I can still do the same thing. I can <coughs> click on a, a, an item. I navigate back to it. I don't know if the Wi-Fi is maybe not participating as well either, but basically I navigate to the different items the same way. Now on Android, it gives us this back button at the top here uh, as part of our navigation strategy. So that's the Android app. Um, finally, you'll probably want to see the Windows Phone app as well. So let me see if my VM is participating. Oops, I went ahead of things and actually loaded the application. So let's look at it first quickly, but basically I can keep adding different monkeys, you know, same idea, navigate to the page with them. And in this case, the, the way to go back on the Windows Phone device is obviously the back button typically. There's not usually a UI concept of that. Um, so we just hit the back button to go back. But our navigation stack is still kept for us uh, because we use that navigation page. So if we look at the code, I'm not going to reload that. If we look at the code for the Windows Phone application, um, again, it's mostly the default code you would have in a new project. Let's see if I can actually get down here. My machine is a little bit slower than I like. Um, and the only thing different that we're doing here, let me zoom in a, a bit, uh, is in your main page, again, calling that initialization, calling that get app main page, and this time we have an extension method, which is convert page to a UI element. So we're setting our main page's content, which expects a UI element of some kind, uh, to the one that we make on the page. So again, only a couple lines of code, and we've got our Windows Phone app ready to go. So that's you know a really simple example of the app, of how to do things, but I think it, it shows how you can write once run anywhere sort of thing, and, and shows how exactly that, that works itself out on each platform, and it's a pretty good way to do things. Now, 